I guess, post run here. And today let's talk about my day two progress. So we just killed both the Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds uh, over on my Twitch on uh, over on my stream on twitch.tv slash Palstron. And uh, what you see in the background is right now is the Searing Exarch. So I already kind of guessed that a build like this, which could just stand behind their ballistas and not do anything, would be extremely good against the new bosses. But I couldn't even imagine how good they would be. We basically completely infantilized them. They were like, I don't know, com a complete joke. The only reason I died once or was it twice, I don't even know. I died once to these balls in the background because I didn't really understand them. But later I did. And uh, number two, because of his AOE explosion, I did not realize just how big that explosion is. Overall, the fights were really interesting, but just in case you want to do them yourself, I'm not going to spoil you too much. I just want to say that EA Ballista on the budget that I have right now, which is round about 2x-ish, is definitely viable of killing those bosses. Now, since some people really weren't able to catch my stream and they still wanted to know how this actually looks like, this is a map, uh, a T16 map from yesterday. It's a port map. Um, now, what I will say is that the build functions just like I thought it would. It's very, very good for mapping. Uh, nothing really changed in that department. The new mobs are pretty rippy, I will say that, uh, which is why we go for Bastion of Elements, right, in our ascendancies. They have a lot of elemental damage, not that much physical damage. Um, the footage you see right now, I'm actually running without determination and just with grace and purity of elements because um, just not getting ignited, uh, not getting frozen is pretty huge and sure you have other sources being able to do it but it also gives you 34 percent all res which makes gearing so much easier and um i soon will have to spec into also spell suppression uh, you have to get a lot of accuracy right so there's a lot going on what you can see there is also we're using the gull unique helmet uh, which basically gives you small shrines along the way whenever you kill mobs uh, those are shrine effects i have right there and I scaled that with shrine stuff from the Atlas passive tree. So I have extra shrines. I have extra shrine effect. I have extra chance to get a double shrine effect. So just a lot of good passives buffs going on for early mapping. Now I want to talk about the goal right at the start because this has been an absolute superstar while mapping. Uh, obviously, it doesn't really do much against bosses. But in mapping scenarios, it has been absolutely crazy. It gives you regen. Uh, so the life region shrine, it gives you speed, it gives you defenses, it gives you basically everything you want, um, with the only downside it being uh, not the greatest helm, right, it only has life and cold res, but it also has increased duration of shrine effects on you, and increased effect of shrine buffs on you, which will then in turn also count for all the additional shrines you have from either supplication or uh, maybe from uh, domination, right? Three additional shrines. So you can really, really juice this up. It's kind of crazy. Um, now, what I will say is that as of this recording, I think uh, these passives do not work with lesser shrines. So it's not the other way around where you can actually like increase duration of shrine effects on players. I think those kind of things actually don't work with the small shrines, but uh, the goal works with the big shrines. Now, later we will go even more crazy and we will go into all that glitters. Right now, we're just unlocking. So getting the extra quant doesn't really do all that much, but that's definitely something I want to do later. And I also want to go into Shatter of Hunger to get a little bit more of these altars, which have been kind of printing scarabs for me. Uh, more than that maybe in, in another video, but yeah, so far the Atlas tree has been very interesting. I'm not going to link this. You can like try this out yourself if you want to copy it, but I'm not going to link it because I don't know if this is correct, right? I don't want to bait you into a bad Atlas tree that I'm just going to respec out of in a few days, right? Um, but yeah, this is kind of what I'm going for right now. I'm going to go for remnants of the past and then I'm maybe going to go for these, but I've heard that these are actually bugged. So maybe stay away from them for now. now other than that, we're currently sitting on 4.8k life. Um, I got a belly of the beast. Chaos was a little bit too rough on the gem links, so I decided against it. Um, I made this bow here. Basically, I slammed, uh, I think it was two, two Shrieking Essence of Greed. And once I hit, I think, T5 attack speed, I just left it like this. Um, obviously, gonna uh, recraft this later, but for now, it, it does what it does, right? You just throw Shrieking Essences of, uh, sorry, Dread on them, right? And um, you get the plus two bow uh, gem levels for sure. And then you get uh, some other stats, which weren't really that good here. Fire damage is extra chaos damage is really, really good. Fire dot multi, if you don't have a prefix open, is also really, really good. Now, the reason for this is it's not actually that much better than a Tempest. Uh, sorry, a, a Storm Cloud, right? Um, the reason you want to get this bow is more for defense. Because having the six link short bow means you free up a, your chest slot. So now you don't have to have a tabby anymore, right? We were running tabula. 
Uh, and now we don't have to anymore. And something I also want to mention is a lot of people ask me about how the hell do you get these colors on? Well, the thing is, if we actually unequip all the gems, we can see the dex requirement of a short bow and the dex requirement of a short bow is 26. So what that means is it's very easy to recolor them. The higher your requirement, the more it's going to favor green sockets, right? And 26, this is just kind of a baby bow. So if you go to reach a chrome calculator and we type in six sockets, uh, 26 dex requirement, and we want three reds, one blue and two greens, calculate, you will see here that if you use chromatics, you use 68.6 on average. People have been telling me they use two reds. If you look at here, Two reds means you're going to spend 192 uh, chromes on average. That's three times this. Just throw chromatics on. If you get unlucky, it is what it is. But on average, it's going to be 68 chromes. Obviously, five off colors would be a complete different story. So, for example, if we want four red here, one green, one blue, then we'll be looking at like 594, right? So don't go five off colors just yet. But for now, four off colors should be really easy to achieve. As for other things I did to the build, I actually decided against pathing to watchtowers here because i felt like it would be too hard to actually get a replacement for skirmish and since we want exactly six totems that means that if i had both watchtowers and skirmish it would have been kind of weird because we don't need seven ballistas right um so i just went with skirmish i didn't path here at all once i have the monies to actually anoint this because it costs two silver oils right i'm going to replace skirmish but then i also have to buy a quiver so for now all that money has been going into for example the helm enchant right um, or just progressing my atlas other than that, I'm planning to go here to a hired killer now. Most likely, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I might also think about a cluster setup now. It's going to be very interesting indeed. Um, as you can see here, I opted not to take Ash Frost and Storm because I went for Bastion of Elements, so I don't need the shock effect. Um, other than that, uh, you can see here Mage Bane and Reflexes. I just started specking into those. Uh, currently, I'm looking at 46% chance to suppress, which is obviously not enough. Um, our next upgrade will be just upgrading our rares to where we get to 100%, but these are a good step in the right direction. In terms of when should you get this, uh, I would say 100% spell suppression before like Cyrus 8 or Maven maybe. Uh, I don't know if you even need it for Cyrus 8. If you know the mechanics, you're not going to get hit anyways, but for Maven, it's very, very nice to have. We're also helping out here with the Bow Mastery plus 100 accuracy per green socket on equipped bow. We only have two green sockets, so it might seem bad, right? But just that 200 accuracy gets me from, I think, 96% chance to hit to 100. So it is what it is, right? Um, gotta make do with what you have at League Start. Um, the phasing a lot of people ask me about, they come from these small notes here. Um, I just took a deadly draw for now. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to keep that in the late game setup. Other than that, not really much changed in here, I feel like. Um, yeah, uh, next up, I definitely want to get the 2% region. Um, per second while moving but honestly with the goal and having so many region shrines region actually wasn't that much of a problem i have some people who tell me this build is squishy as hell and i i honestly at this stage don't know what to do about it um other than tell them to get life get more levels uh, i mean at this point i'm not really dying anymore at all and i don't even have determination in the build yet currently we're running a low level precision with purity of elements with Defiance Banner and with Grace, and it's working like a charm. As soon as I have an Enlightened 3, I will be able to also fit in Determination, and then I will replace, ins either I will replace Inspiration with Life Tap altogether, and just put everything on Life Tap, or I will somehow make it so all my skills have zero mana cost, which with some shenanigans, we'll see about that. But yeah, other than that, I don't really know what else I could tell you to do like i don't even have any armor right now and i'm not really dying as you can see here against the the eater of worlds i put in a uh, third life flask against the jade flask that's also something i want to say here is against bosses that take very long right and they have phases they don't really give you much back much flask charges doing stuff like jade flask or even silver flask or granite flask isn't really that valuable if you think about it because they are only up for a certain amount of time and the fight could take like five minutes depending on your gear right so you might as well remove all of these for a reactive flask for life flasks right uh and then you spec in right now i have this but against bosses you want soul versus lava right and you're just never going to run out of life flasks um together with profane chemistry other than that my gear is pretty bare bones this is still the same boots uh we upgraded the leather belt we didn't need any res here obviously my next upgrade will be also a diadian dawn right um, we need some strength here to get the de determination to level, but we don't read it right now. Um, a lot of people have also asked me about steel skin. This is basically just until we get determination. Once you have determination, you obviously go for molten shell. Um, also, the reason I've added cold damage here is the best in slot would be added burning damage support 
but that would require five off colors. And I feel like Deadly Ailments is actually not as good as I gave it credit for. Um, because if the, the hit damage actually sums up to quite a bit. So I would probably go edit cold damage over anything. Uh, especially since you have no Blizzard Crown right now. So you have almost uh, untapped potential in terms of edit damage, right? Um, other than that, yeah, nothing really changed. The inspiration is just here to fix some mana issues. And if you still have some mana issues, I would highly recommend you to get a Enduring Mana Flask. This is just a low-level one that I use in no region maps, but it's plenty enough. Obviously, go for a better one, like a Divine Mana Flask or Eternal. I don't remember which one is better, but get the Enduring on there, and then basically it's just like a, a passive mana regeneration. Also, don't forget to get yourself a cheap Anoint. In this case, I went with Master Fletcher. This costed me like a Chaos or something. I think it only, only the Ember Oil really costs something. Something. and um, this is basically just going to give us attack speed accuracy even the proc speed isn't that bad because if you think about how ballistas work right um being able to faster connect with enemies that are like running around is definitely nice to have um if you don't really need the accuracy or the attack speed you can also always go for stuff like divine judgment but yeah overall what am i going to do next with the character now i want to do so if if we look at the uh, atlas here uh i now have the grasping voidstone and the omnis omniscient voidstone and now we just need to kill uh, the Elder in the Shaper's Realm. So that's Uber Elder, right? And then I have to defeat Maven. And once I have those, I have my full four Void Stones. And then I can start juicing with Sextons, which we're going to do after that. Uh, also, I think we want to kill uh, Cyrus. Yeah, we want to basically unlock all of those. And then we're going to think about what's the best map to kind of favor on the side for this kind of build. And I'm not sure yet. I'm going to talk about this more in the next episode. But yeah, that's all for me for the day and um yeah i'm gonna keep you guys up posted at least the next two days i'm gonna update right um after i kill the bosses i'm gonna tell you maybe if i make some changes right uh but yeah since i still don't have a slogan see you next time